Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. I greet you in Jesus' joy today. Um, so today, I wanted to go over what it is knowing the power. So what does it mean knowing the power to you? What is knowing the power in Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. So we're going to go to Numbers 14, uh, 1 through 2, and it says, Then the whole community began weeping out loud, and they cried all night. Their voices rose in a great chorus of protest against Moses and Aaron. If only we had died in Egypt or even in the wilderness, they complained. So with this scripture, have you ever found yourself looking back, wanting things that were behind you? Did you have you ever felt that feeling? Do you um do you feel that right now? I know that some of us look at our past wanting things that were of old. Wanting things that we did before, wanting old habits, wanting our old job back, wanting our old spouse back. Sometimes we, we often look back when we don't need to look back, hallelujah, because God has placed a future in us. Thank you, Jesus. So we're constantly complaining. We're constantly wanting things that were behind. You're wanting old habits, drugs, alcohol, things that were of destruction, hallelujah. All of those things that you used to do, all of those things that were in your past, was going to lead you to, towards this, uh, destruction. And God doesn't want destruction towards our life. He wants abundance. He wants a future for us. Hallelujah. So, instead of being joyful of what's next, you are steady complaining about the past and what could have, should have happened. You're steady thinking about those things that could have happened. But guess what? You are here now and you are for the future. So you need to just be quiet. You need to just shut up. <laughs> Sorry for being blunt, but hey, we, we're speaking God's word. And God's word is going to go through regardless. So you have to stop desiring things that were in the past. It may seem like it was good at the end. It may seem like it was good, but at the end it was going to lead to your destruction. And here we see the Israelites were constantly, they were asking what, for what they had back in Egypt. And how they had good food and when they were craving the meat that they used to eat. But not knowing, not even realizing what God had placed in front of them. That God had actually saved them from dying. God saved them from damnation. Hallelujah. He saved them from being killed by the Egyptians. So, don't you understand that in order for you to be saved in God's promise, you have to move when God says. You have to move when God says. If God says move to the right. You move to the right. If God says move to the left, you move to the left. If God says kneel down, you kneel down. If God says go up, you go up. You have to listen to God's voice. You can't be a fool and lay in the same place you have been for 10 years. You can't be a fool and lay in the same place you've been laying for 3 years, 5 years, 6 months. You can't lay in that same place. You have to listen to God's voice and be obedient to His voice. Because how are you ever going to change? How are you ever going to move on with what God has given you? If you keep laying in the same place you have been. And I'm not talking about just physically. But I am also talking about it spiritually. And God wants to put you in a place. In a place where He can be with you. Hallelujah. In an intimate place. A spiritual place. So... Trust God and move. You have to move when God says. You have to be prepared for when God says move, move. If God tells you, you have to move out of the country, move out of the country. If God says you have to move out of the house, move out of the house. If God says you have to move from a state, you move. Hallelujah. You have to listen to God's voice and what His calling is in your life. Don't be a fool. Hallelujah. Be careful what you wish for. Our words have more power than you think. See, when God the Almighty, the Alpha and the Omega, created the earth, He spoke it with His very mouth. And this is one thing about God. He created us what the power of, of our tongue is. When He created the earth, hallelujah, He showed us how powerful our mouth is, hallelujah. Every time that you speak, you're speaking power. You have to speak abundance towards it. You have to speak positivity. You can't speak negativity over your life. That's why he has gifted us with the, with the Holy Bible. Hallelujah. So, in, in the beginning of the Bible, we learn uh, what the power of God is. What the power of his word is. So, 
Through Genesis 1, 2, 3, and through the 29th, we learn how God uses his tongue, how God uses his voice to create the earth. So it says, Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. In Genesis 1, 6, Then God said, Let there be a space between the waters to separate the waters of the heavens from the waters of the earth. Genesis 1, 9. Then God said, Let the waters beneath the sky flow together in one place, so dry ground may appear, and this is what happened. And that's, it keeps going on all the way until Genesis 129, and it says, Then God said, Look, I have given you every seed bearing plant throughout the earth, and all the fruit trees for your food. So, and it came to pass because his words had power. And when God showed us this in the beginning of the Bible, he was showing us the kind of power that we hold in our tongue. See, and people are steady complaining about themselves. They're steady putting themselves down when you're giving that power to the enemy. You're giving that power to the negativity energy. Hallelujah. You have to give it to God. You have to, you have to speak positive about yourself. You have to speak a future about yourself. You have to know, you have to say, yes, yes, Lord, I can do it. Nothing is going to stop me. I can break generational curses. I can do it. Hallelujah. Because you are not like your father. Hallelujah. You are not like your father. You are not like your mother. You are not like your family members. You are not like none of them. Because God made you unique. And God has a purpose for your life. And God is trying to show you what kind of power you hold in your tongue. Because each one of you, everybody who's watching this video, you have power. And you're not watching this video by coincidence, hallelujah, because God wants you to know the kind of power that you hold in the tongue. He wants to show you that when he created the earth, he did it just by speaking. And just by speaking, you're able to create things, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So the same way God is trying to show you, your words have power over your life. Not tomorrow, not next year, but now. So you're able to change your future now, today. Everything that you speak is being heard. Not only by people, but God himself. God is a listening God, but he is also a God of grace. A God that understands our weaknesses and what we can handle, but he also knows your hearts and your desires. God knows everything, hallelujah, and he hears your struggles. He hears you. All you got to do is talk to him. So we're going to go to Numbers 14 and 3. And it says, Why is the Lord taking us to this country only to have us die in battle? Our wives and our little ones will be carried off as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to return to Egypt? Hallelujah. And it says, Why would God bring you out of something that was normal to you to the unknown? Why would God do that? Why would God take you out of the normal to the unknown? Have you ever questioned that? Have you ever been in that uncomfortable place in your life that you just don't know what's going on? And you're asking God, God, why am I here? Why did he have you move out of state? Why did, he, why did you decide to move out? What caused you to leave your job? Only God the Almighty knows. For His wisdom is beyond our understanding. Everything He does is with purpose. When you, arrived, when you arrived at your new job, He knew what you was doing. When you stepped in through the church doors, the church doors, He knew exactly why you went in. He knew already. All you have to do is trust Him with what you need. Trust Him with that need in your heart that is empty that is empty in your spirit hallelujah when um would the lord really bring you out into the out of okay let me start over would the lord really bring you out into the ordinary just to cause you to die would he would have created all those miracles across egypt just to have you not survive hallelujah would he do that would he have saved you from that car accident would he have saved you from your ex-spouse who was very violent towards you? Would he have saved you from the army, from the war? Would he have saved you every time that you walk outside? Hallelujah. Did, did God really take the Israelites out of Egypt just to have them die?
God would never do that. If it was so, there would have been that in Egypt. They would have never made it across the Red River, hallelujah. The Red Sea, they would have never made it. They would have never made it because God allowed it to be. God even made a miracle where the water was, the, the ground was dry. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. What kind of generation we live in where we often question God's way? We question the way he directs us, the way our leaders try to guide us. What kind of generation are you where you question the leaders? What kind of generation are you that you don't know, you don't really trust in God? Have you gotten ahead of yourself? Hallelujah. Our leaders want the best for us. And all they can do, they can give messages from God, but they can't make you to them. You have to make your own choice. And God is right there with you, wanting to make that choice. Hallelujah. He will never leave you by yourself. God will guide you towards, God will never guide you towards a dead end. He is a living God. A living true God. Hallelujah. What kind of people do you think you are? Questioning him. Questioning his authority. Questioning who God is. God is God the Almighty. He is no respecter of persons. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So we are not living in this era because of you. We are not living in this era because of what your grandparents did. We are not living today because of what your grandmother did. Of what the, the Europeans did. We are not living because of them. We are not living because of whoever did what they did. We are not living because of them. We are not living because of that person that set freedom in us. It's because of Jesus Christ. Because he died for our sins. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God gave his only begotten son for us. So, don't you ever forget that we are not here because of what your past family did. Not because of what your rich family has and owns. That's why you're alive now and you got this. No, it's not because of that. In John 3, 16 and 18, we learn, For this is the way God loved the world. He gave his own he gave his one and only son that everyone who believes in him should not perish but have have would not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world should be saved through him. The one who believes in him is not condemned. So with that scripture, we learned that we are saved through Jesus Christ. Because if it wasn't for God, for Jesus coming in, we would still have to make sacrifices unto God. Back then, they used to sacrifice animals to God because they wanted God to forgive their sins. But through Jesus Christ, let me tell you guys, don't ever let no other belief, don't ever let other religions take you away from Jesus Christ. Take you away from God, from what He actually did for you. Because... Other religions, they're blinded. And Christianity is not a religion. Because God is not a religion. God uses the the people who are not ordinary. Hallelujah. He uses those unique people to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. Because it's not about rules and regulations. It's about God the Almighty. And we all as Christians should be together for one mission. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, how dare you question God's authority? Can you really live with yourself without God? Do you think that you, you would be alive right now if it wasn't for God? Would you be breathing? Would you would you be able to see? Would you be able to hear? Would you be able to come home back to peace with your family? Would you be able to be who you are if it wasn't no God? Let me tell you guys, the reason why we have peace in earth, the reason why everything is not in chaos is because of God. In the last days, God is going to take his peace from the world. And let me tell you, it's going to be chaos everywhere. It is because of him that we are able to come back home to our family. It is because we have peace on this earth. That is why everything is balanced. Because of God. Thank you, Jesus. God is a great God. The Lord is love and kind. How wicked is your thinking for, God and that, for doubting God's promise over your life? over your family after he has been your protector since you were born. How dare you question God's authority? How dare you question God and who he is? God is no respecter of persons. Hallelujah. God is God without you. God is the Alpha and 
the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. God is not a God of tricks and evil. You are going against God's word just by doubting what he said over your life. Don't let the enemy fool you. He tries to deceive you by negative thoughts of God or to question God's knowledge. And the, the enemy's job is to make you confused about your faith. The enemy's job is to make you question God's word, God's very word. And if God didn't care about us, you think that he would have gave us a holy Bible? You think he would have gave us a book full of instruction? Because God is mighty. God has many things to do, hallelujah. We are just tiny crickets to him, hallelujah. But he still has grace towards us. He still loves us, but he blessed us so much that he gave us a book, hallelujah, that is full of blessings, that is full of the word that is alive. Every time that you read it, you get a new revelation from it, hallelujah. And I encourage everybody to read their word, even if it's one verse a day, even if it's get you a Bible that you're able to understand. So that you can read about God's word, so that you can understand God's word, so that it may be, so that God may be able to guide you and lead you in the right direction. Hallelujah! Don't let the enemy fool you. Don't let the enemy fool you. The enemy can work through anybody. In Numbers fourteen and eight, we learn. Um, it says, "If the Lord is pleased with us, He will lead us into that land, a land with flowing milk and honey, and will give it to us." In Numbers 14 and 9, we learn, Only do not rebel against the Lord, and do not be afraid of the people of the land, because we will devour them. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. <clears throat> do not be afraid of them. God doesn't want us to be afraid. See, God is trying to get you into a secret place, a secret land, and I don't mean just spiritually, but physically. A secret land where you're, where you're able to have an intimate relationship with Him. Where you're able to trust Him fully. Hallelujah. Where you're able to trust Him where you can just... It feels like you're laying on a pillow. It feels like you're just able to give it all to Him. Even if you have to cry. I don't care if you're a man, if you're a woman, if you're a child. You have to do what God says. And you, know, you don't have to care about anybody else. That's because it's between you and God. And at the end of the day, you're trying to make it to heaven. So, God is a giver of life. Without Him, we would not have no breath. We would not even to be in this world. Hallelujah. We would not even be able to speak. Because He is that powerful. He has made us unique. He has made us to fulfill this earth. Hallelujah. One thing we can be sure of is that His Word, His Word lives and will never pass away. He is an unchanging God. We must put ourselves away and totally trust God, so that the Lord may be with us. We must show strength even in our most distressed times. Not because of our fleshly strength, but because of our inner strength that God gives you. See, God is able to give you inner strength. Inner strength in your spirit. That you're able to fulfill that hallelujah. You're able to fill that gap, that empty gap in your heart, that empty gap in your spirit. That nothing else can fill it but God. So in Numbers 14 and 11, it says, The Lord said to Moses, How long will these people treat me with contempt? How long will they refuse to believe in me? In spite of all the signs, I have performed among them. So again, how dare you question God? Why would you choose not to believe His word? Why would you choose not to believe what He has said over your life? Hallelujah. Why would you question Him? God is our almighty God and He knows exactly what He is doing. So one thing you have to remember is that God will never change. He is unchanging. Sometimes it is hard for us to understand that concept because humans, us people, we often change our minds very quick. Some people change their minds every second. Some people change their minds every minute, every day, every five days, every year. Every couple of months, some people change their minds. They go right, left. You know what I'm saying? They keep changing their minds. Hallelujah. And that is one thing that we must understand is that God is not an unchanging. God is unchanging. He never changes. He is the same God yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He will never change His word. Hallelujah. It's easier for the earth to disappear than His word to change. Thank you, Jesus. So, 
but it is a matter of stepping to the side with all those thoughts and being able to trust him in the way hallelujah in the way that we're able to trust him fully so that god can help us understand what it's like to trust god in so god is able to help us what it is just a god like him a god who is unchanging while we change almost every day it is being humble to thy spirit it is being obedient to thy spirit so in Genesis 14, 28, it says, So tell them, as surely as I live, declares the Lord, I will do to you the very thing I heard you say. And we're going to keep going, 29 to 30. And it says, In this wilderness, your bodies will fall. Every one of you, 20 years old or more, who was counted in the census and who was grumbled against me, not one of you will enter the land I swore with uplifting hand to make your home, except Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, son of Nun. So in these verses, we learn how God heard them as they complained in the wilderness. They wished for things they had no idea to come, because they did not realize the power of the tongue. God declared what he had heard them say. Now what God had the intent to do, which was to give them a promised land. Instead, the Israelites cursed themselves, just like some people should believe God instead of doubting his word. I'm trying to stop you guys from cursing your souls, hallelujah. You can, so, you can curse yourselves with your own very word. With your own very word that you say out of your mouth. That's why I say that you have to speak positive things about you. You have to speak positive things about your kids. Hallelujah. Because your kids are not like their father. They are not like their mother. They are unique. God made them unique. So don't ever put a curse over them. Don't put a curse over yourself or your family. You have to know the power that you hold in your tongue. Because there is power, hallelujah. When we doubt his word, we create cause. We create and cause things that were never supposed to be there. Remember that. That once you start speaking, once you start doubting his word, you are causing things to happen that were never meant to happen. Just like when God created the earth. He created Adam and Eve. But he didn't create them for destruction. He created them to fulfill the earth, to be fruitful. But they ended up sinning against God. So, God is an unchanging God, a God who keeps his promises. Remember this one thing about God, and it is in uh, Numbers 14 and 18. The Lord is slow to anger, abounding in love and forgiving sin and rebellion. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children for the sin of the parents of the third and fourth generation. And this is one thing that we must change we must change this because people are making it seem like it is a sin. It is something bad to teach our kids about God. It is bad to, to mention God in public places. You need to start making that normal again, hallelujah. Because God is the almighty God. And children now, it seems like they don't really know who God is. They get offended. We can't get offended. God is God. They would not be created if it wasn't for God. For God knew thee before they were born. Hallelujah. You have to make that normal again. You have to be able to teach your kids how important it is to know God because their future depends on it. Their future depends on it. And the only one who's going to be able to help them is God. Because God knows right from wrong and He knows exactly what you're going to need in your life. He knows exactly what's good for you. Because God gives us visions and dreams and warnings. Hallelujah. Of what to watch out for, who to watch out for, and where to go. Thank you, God. So remember, you have to make this normal again. Because it is not weird to know about God. It is not strange to talk about God. God is God. Remember that. Exodus 34 and 6. And he passed in front of Moses, proclaiming, The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger and abounding in love and faithfulness. Deuteronomy 5 and 10. But showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. In Psalm 103 and 8, it says, The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. The Lord is guiding you towards change, and all it takes is commitment and trust. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. So, you have to trust Him all the way, even if it takes you to leave certain things in the past that seem good. Remember His power. 
remember God's power. When the enemy gives you a thought to go back to what you used to do, to go back to how angry you was, to go back to that upset, upset you, hallelujah. You need to remember God's power. And God's power is able to change the future. He's able to change what's to come. I don't care what the enemy told you that's going to happen. God can change that with one decision in your life. And that's to trust him fully. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. See, he is mighty and unchanging. He will change you all the way through. Even if you go through some hardships, just know that God always has a way. And what the devil meant for good, for bad, God will change it for the good of those that love and follow him. So God is able to change any situation. I don't care what nobody told you. I don't care what your psychic told you. I don't care what the witch told you. God is able to change that. You have to stop being afraid. Stop being in fear of what's to come. But trust God with all that you have. You are worthy. You are loved and truly cherished by God. Jesus has made a way for us to have a personal connection with the Father. We no longer have to make sacrifices for our sin. Instead, we are forgiven thanks to Jesus Christ because he has given the ultimate sacrifice. He defeated the enemy through death in the cross and now seated at the right hand of the Father. Hallelujah. He loves you and it is time for you to know it because God loves you. Jesus loves you and he died for your sins so that you can be saved by grace. He is unchanging and mighty in power. He is an unchanging God. He is a God that we can trust in. If you don't trust nobody else, if you don't trust your neighbor, if you don't trust your friend, your best friend, you don't trust your spouse, I'm going to tell you one thing, one thing, one person you can't trust in, one God, is Jesus Christ. And God the Father. Hallelujah. We must trust in Him. Because He knows you more than you know yourself. He knows your desires more than what you know your desires. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. May God receive the honor and the glory. Remember who you are. Remember who you are in Jesus Christ. Remember how blessed you are. Remember that He has not given you a spirit of fear. But he has given you a spirit of power. You have power to overcome things. You have you have power to overcome many things. Hallelujah. When you trust and you believe, God is able to make it come true. Stop being afraid. But instead, go for it. Go for it and trust God. Because he knows exactly what's going on. He knows exactly what you're doing. Remember, don't go to the left, don't go to the right, unless God says. Teach the gospel. Teach the children. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, this is going to be my message for today. So I'm going to go ahead and say a quick prayer. Father God, I want to thank you for this awesome day. Father God, I want to thank you for this awesome message of knowing the power. I pray that you touch these people watching this video, Father God, that you break yokes inside of them, hallelujah, that they may remember the power of you, O oh God, the power that they remain in their tongue, hallelujah, the power that they hold, hallelujah. I pray, Father God, that you be with them, that you show them, and that your Holy Spirit dwells in them, Father God, that you show them the truth, Father God, because you all, you are the only way, hallelujah, you are the only light in our life. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Y'all take care.